Hi, this is Paul Hoyt, CEO of Ascending Harvest, coming to you with our daily update. Joining me today is my best buddy business partner, resident inventor genius with Ascending Harvest, Shane McKenna, who's going to talk to you in just a second. We're excited to have you here today. We're going to have a very interesting conversation on problem solving and resourcefulness after we talk to you a little bit about the Ascending Harvest project and the crowdfunding campaign and what's coming up for, ne for us next with regards to that. So I know you'll definitely want to listen to that because Shane and I have both over, over the years faced, you know, one or two little challenges that, <laughs> we've, <laughs> that we've had to overcome, you know, and we've, I, I bet we each have our own different approach to dealing with those things. So I'm going to learn about Shane's approach to dealing with challenges, and he's going to learn a little bit more about mine, and we're going to share them both with you. With that, hey, Shane, how are you doing? I am doing really fantastic. It, uh, it's been a, a whirlwind this last week. So we went live with our crowdfunding a little bit over a week ago, and, you know, you when you – do something new, you have some expectations about what it's going to be like and, you know, what you're going to be doing and, and uh, how it's going to unfold. But, you know, this has been a different, uh, this has been a different journey to be on this crowdfunding project. And it's been fun. It's been a lot of work. It's, uh, you know, I've never done any kind of fundraising that's similar to a crowdfunding before not not personally I've worked on other people's crowdfunding projects but um, you know I've done things like food drives and helping out at the homeless shelter and you know other charity things like that you know donating time to different causes but this has been one of those big sustained projects and uh, you know it's it it's one of those experiences you know you should have it <laughs> you should have the experience because you know life is life is about an accumulation of experiences and this is one of those that it's it's eye opening and it stretches you in ways that uh that gives you new opportunities for perspective and so those are the things that I really appreciate about experiences in life and this is one of those experiences that I'll that I'll always remember and and take away some great nuggets and I hope to talk about some of that today some of the nuggets that have come out of challenges in life I, I look forward to that too I am reminded when it comes to the crowdfunding project about the old adage that says that no battle plan ever survives first contact with the enemy <laughs> which which I often paraphrase when I'm doing my business consulting to say that no strategic growth plan ever survives first contact with the market you know, every time that you get out there and you try something, you learn something that you've never learned before. So I always, I, and I think always is the right word, tell my clients to engage with the marketplace as soon as possible so that you can learn the lessons that only the marketplace can teach you. And we're certainly learning some of those lessons when it comes to crowdfunding. If you haven't done so already, you know, go to us, ascendingharvest.com. You'll click on the links that are there to take a look at our Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. Or you can just, you know, Google or search at your favorite search engine the three words Indiegogo Ascending Harvest, and it'll take you right to our crowdfunding campaign. Watch the video that we put together where Shane talks about the, the products and the, and the what and the why behind the entire Ascending Harvest mission. Look at some of the other content that's there and kick us a buck. Pick us one, five, ten, forty dollars, hundred and sixty dollars, whatever you are called to do, but do something because you know every little contribution helps build up the momentum, you know, and helps keep the energy flowing with the whole crowdfunding campaign. So if you're listening to this recording, just do it now. Everybody's got a dollar, you know, to, they can share on this campaign, and we really would appreciate that. Um, I'm very interested to hear what Shane has to say about facing challenges in his life because frankly Shane's faced a challenge or two that I have not faced his challenges have been larger than the challenges that I have faced and I think of a different nature and therefore he has a different insight when it comes to facing challenges problem-solving 
and resourcefulness, you know, and working your way through, you know, some of the crap that every once in a while gets dumped on us. Shane, talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges you faced and how you faced them successfully. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, if I if I go back in history, one of the things is, is I had the privilege of spending a lot of time working with my grandfather when I was young. And my grandfather was a double amputee and we had 400 and I, I think we had 460 acres. I'm rolling that off the top of my head right now. I think that's accurate. <laughs> But we had uh, three different properties totaling about 460 acres, and we, um, we grew a lot of food. We raised cattle, and, um, and because my grandfather was a double amputee, a lot of the work uh, on that property was up to my little brother and I. And, um, and so we put up the, the hay crop. We... We packed the wood, we packed the water. By the way, the house we lived in was a log cabin that my great grandfather had built. There was no indoor plumbing. Um, we heated and cooked on wood stoves. It was at 8,000 feet elevation in Wyoming. So <laughs> it's not unusual to hit 40 below zero in the winter. And, um, you know, there's a lot of challenges in that life. And, and my grandfather was extremely stoic. Um, and so we just got up and did what we needed to do. It was just, it's just the way it is. So I think that taught me how to look at hard things differently than many people get the experience to view them, especially in our culture in the United States. You know, uh, I'll tell you, I really appreciate just walking to the sink and turning the tap and having hot water because having hot water in our circumstance meant gathering wood, cutting wood, chopping wood, building a fire, putting a pot on the stove, waiting for it to get hot. It's a lot different than going and turning a tap and it just comes out of your hot water heater. So, I kind um, of bet that the indoor plumbing, it seems like it's really cool too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so this is not an exaggeration. We kept a broom in the outhouse because in the winter, the snow would drift through the cracks in the outhouse, and you would literally sweep the snow off the seat before you used the outhouse. And I'm telling you, at anywhere from 10 below zero to 40 below zero, that was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm thinking you'd have to take a big breath before you sat down. <laughs> yeah, you just you're just like, all right, this is what it is, and you know it's not going to be fun, but it's 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 a necessity, so let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, so so technique number one when it comes to solving challenges and facing problems is let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I actually use that. When I'm working on a project, I frequently look at what is the most difficult task in this project, and I will attack that task first. Mm -hmm. um, because if you wait to do the most difficult thing last, that's like having the, that's like having the uphill at the end of the marathon. Yeah. Let's let's get the uphill out of the way at the beginning of the marathon so everything else feels like downhill. It, there still may be a lot of hard work ahead in the project, but it's not as hard as what you just did. Yeah. So that's one of my techniques is is attack the hard stuff first. I like that. <laughs> um and then, you know, one of my other, my biggest challenge in my life probably I mean, I've, I've had a few big challenges, but the biggest challenge in my life is I'm coming up on the 10-year anniversary where I had, I had suffered some injuries. I'd torn some discs in my lower back, and I just, I had a lot of work to do. You know, I had a business that we built furniture and doors and cabinets, and, you know, we were, we were, uh, we were always busy. We were slammed all the time. We did excellent work. 
And I always wanted to set the example in my shop. I worked as hard as I could work to set the example that hard work was just part of what we did every day. And I wanted to show everybody that, you know, the boss was going to work as hard as they're going to work. And because of that attitude and my cowboy up attitude from my Wyoming upbringing, that's a very common phrase in the, in the Western culture is cowboy up. Um, you know, I just worked through pain and eventually that caught up with me and it was Christmas morning, 10 years ago, my kids had got some presents that needed some assembly. So I was down on the floor putting together this little train track for my son. And I noticed that I had a different kind of pain in my back. Now I suffered with pain in my back every single day. So it wasn't unusual for me to feel pain. But this day, it was something different. And over the next week and a half, that just progressed worse and worse and worse until the point I couldn't stand up, I couldn't sit, I couldn't walk. And, um, you know, and I, the only thing I could do is crawl. Oh. And so I, I sought medical attention. And, and what had happened is one of my discs my L6 disc was so badly torn that one of those tears just opened up and it essentially pinched off the spinal cord. So it just shut me off from the waist down. And um, I, had, I had some movement in my legs, but most of the movement in my lower body was restricted by that pinching of the nerves and, the, and basically the nerves not being able to send the signal to my legs. And, and it was excruciating pain. The pain was, was extremely uh, high pain. And to top it off, we were in the middle of a big project that had, um, that we actually had a penalty if we didn't complete it on time. It was a $1,000 a day penalty to not complete this project. And here I am, I couldn't go out in the shop. And, um, and so it was, a, it was a super, super intense moment because my team, my family, my friends were all like, wow, Shane, what are you going to do? And um, while a lot of people were in fear, I, to be honest, I was in fear too, but I, lear I learned how to control my fear a long time ago, that, that fear is just a state of mind and not to let it overtake you instead use it to push you into action so that's one of the things i did so i used my fear i used my fear and my doubt and my uncertainty to push me into action and that action was to hire some extra people and that is actually when i learned 3d software so i taught myself how to use 3d software so that I could send um, drawings and screen renderings and, and images to my team at the shop so that they knew what was in my head, what had to be built um, for our project because I was in the middle of designing it. So it was all in my head and, and it had to get out to the shop so people could make parts. So I did all of my, my programming and designing um, and uh, that process to get the use of my legs back required going to physical therapy twice a day. I found a physical therapist that would work with me. Um, I could have gone the route of surgery, but I, I didn't want to have discs replaced and my spine fused. I, I've had friends and family that have done that, and I see the long-term effects of that. And so I chose to take the very hard path of recovery through physical therapy. And it took me a year to get full use of my legs back. But part of what I did is six days a week, I would literally crawl into my physical therapist's office and do my 45 minutes to an hour of physical therapy twice a day. And, and then I would crawl back out to the parking lot and I had hired a personal assistant to take me to the physical therapist and take me home every day and um, to help me with anything that I needed to be my legs, to be my eyes, to be my, 
to to go out and and to the shop and communicate with people if need be whatever i needed i hired a personal assistant to do that and you know fortunately for me i was in a position that i could afford to to get the physical therapy i could afford to hire a personal assistant i could afford to um work my way through the situation that i was in um part of the lessons that i learned from all of that is that there are ways to get through really hard challenges um you know my team stepped up my family stepped up i hired a personal assistant who was awesome she was absolutely amazing at what she did and she took on the role of of organizing me and organizing our team because she knew that i couldn't and so you know uh, i learned that i didn't have to be the top performing workhorse in my shop to be effective you know that was a limiting belief that i had held for a long time is that i had to lead my team by working by physically working harder than anybody else in my shop and i learned that i could that i could work in a different way that i could use my mind to lead instead of my body to lead and so so there were a lot of lessons that came out of that and in the end i was able to work through the physical limitations i did get full use of my legs back um we did accomplish the the project that we were in the middle of um we were half a day late we got charged $500 which i thought was uh which i thought was very fair they could have charged us the full thousand so <laughs> so it's pretty remarkable so i heard you have a, think about a lot of strategies there when it comes to resourcefulness and resourcefulness is one of them you found a way to work around the challenges to deal with it you did a lot of different things you hired the personal assistants you hired new members on your team you learned the the 3d software you shifted one of those limiting beliefs and became a mental leader and a, an emotional leader as opposed to being a physical leader of your team so you did a lot of things different than what you had done before in order to properly address the challenges that that you know physical ailment had presented itself to you so congratulations on that yeah thank you and those gifts those gifts are paying great dividends you know today that that challenge molded me and shaped me into a better person if and i often say this if i knew that i could get to where i'm at now and that i had to go through that challenge to get here i would sign up for it again because the gifts that came out of it were greater than the challenge for wow. me that's awesome i love that you know i was listening to a very experienced investor a few years ago I actually took a class at stanford in angel investing in Silicon Valley and at one point in time the lady who was teaching the class was talking about you know the attitude and the mindset of successful entrepreneurs she said her very favorite question to ask any any entrepreneur in which or in whom she was considering an investment was you know tell me what challenges you've overcome in the past and how your resourcefulness allowed you to address those challenges because she said the number one skill set that any entrepreneur needed to have was resourcefulness the ability to face a challenge and find a way over it around it or through it in order to meet the goal and the objective and that sounds like exactly what you did you had that entrepreneurial mindset that you know you you set took the cowboy up and set it to the side and found something else some other way to achieve your goal of getting back on your feet yeah that you know i i think i think actually i still cowboy up i just i just because getting through challenges one of the other things is you just have to have tenacity yeah. and persistence if 
if you let something beat you up and put you out of the game, you're out of the game. You know, you don't forfeit the game. You know, maybe you maybe you choose a different path. Maybe you uh, maybe you shift your your objectives. Maybe you shift your target. There's a lot of things you can do that you're still in the game, but don't quit. You know, quitting is a guaranteed failure. If, yep. if you want, if you want a guaranteed failure, quit. So, so the the objective is to never quit because quitting is failure. Anything, anything other than quitting, shifting, changing, uh, um, reevaluating your goals, um, taking new directions, those are all transitions. Th those are all transitional, but. But in my mind, cowboy up means is you just don't quit. And so that, I think, is the number one thing that, that you absolutely have to look at is if I quit, that's a guaranteed failure. So let's figure out a way to succeed by transitioning. I think that's awesome. You know, when I uh, developed the Awakened CEO system a few years ago, we always – had this three levels of performance and level one was mindset level two was methods and level three was momentum so the mindset meant you know as you face any challenge or an opportunity that you have have a great mindset in this particular case it's have optimism perseverance resilience flexibility willpower you know all of that that attitude of success that says that I'm gonna find a way to make this work I'm gonna find a way through this challenge, as I said before, you know, through it, over it, around it, whatever, and having that mindset of optimism, of hope, of faith, is got to be the first step. Because without that, if you're sitting there thinking that you know everything I do is w worthless, it's never going to work, it's just a waste of time, I should just go back to bed, <laughs> you know, it's it's never going to work. So step number one is the mindset. Have the mindset of possibilities, have the mindset of optimism, have the mindset of faith and of hope of and believing in yourself and believing in your team. Then it comes to the methods. And of course, Shane, you know that one of my gifts is having a lot of step-by-step -step sequences that we deal with things. And having, once you have that mindset of abundance and optimism and hope, then you can go into a step-by-step -step sequence for solving that problem, which usually starts with you know, understanding and being very clear on what the outcome is that you are pursuing and then goes into some sort of a brainstorming session of figuring out what all of your alternatives are without judgment, you know, just figuring out what all your alternatives are. The more alternatives, the better. Then the next step is to evaluate all of those opportunities fairly, which may take, you know, an hour or it may take much longer than that if there's research and experimentation and other things that need to happen in order for you to do a proper evaluation of all of your options and then you take action then you make a decision and you take action and and all of those are very very important I like what you said earlier about um, about doing the tough thing first I remember an entrepreneur I was working with about 15 years ago who said, you know, first thing he did everything every morning when he got to the office was make a list of the things that needed to be done, and then he would take the very toughest thing and do that first. So it would be out of the way, so it wouldn't be, you know, on his mind the rest of the day, and he wouldn't be experiencing that fearfulness, that hesitation, that resistance throughout the day. You know, he would cowboy up, he would suck it up, you know, and do the tough thing first, whether that's be making a collection call, you know, calling an employee on their performance or their, or their results, or whatever it happened to be, he would do whatever was toughest and do that right out of the chute, and then the rest of the day, you know, would go much better. Um, one of the techniques that I use, by the way, when it comes to doing tough things, is to break it down into a series of very, very small tasks. And I know that I've broken it down into small enough tasks if the next thing that I do is very, very easy. Sometimes that's just picking up the phone. Sometimes that's looking up a phone number. Sometimes that's just picking up the pen. 
you know, take, take that whatever you consider that massive task to be and break it down into a series of very small steps such that the next thing that you do is very easy. So you do something that's easy and then you do something that's easy again and then you do something that's easy again and before you know it with enough practice your entire life becomes easy because you develop the habit of breaking down very large problems and very tough tasks into very simple things. And I have to say since I started that meditation, that mental exercise process last December that nearly everything I do is easy because it's a series of 10 or 100 or 1,000 very small, easy tasks. And I have the mindset that this next breath will be easy, this next task will be easy. So that's another way of being resourceful and letting go of the fear and the hesitation and the resistance because you focused on just taking that next step and then the next step and then the next step. Yeah, so... One of the other things that I used to do when I was younger, and you know what you said reminded me of it, is I was a competitive long distance runner. Yeah. And and especially when I lived in Europe, uh, I ran a lot of really long distance uh, races, marathons and half marathons. And when you run a marathon, there is that point in the marathon where your body wants to shut down. It's especially when you're pushing yourself competitively when you're running that in a competitive way you push your body to a point where your body is begging you to stop and the way that you get through that is you set a goal up ahead and and you set that goal at whatever distance it needs to be it could be a hundred feet it could be a half a mile but you you set yourself a target and you say okay I'm gonna make it to that spot in the race and you set a visual target and then you just work towards that target and you focus on accomplishing that target and then you set the next one and you set the next one and you set the next one and that's how you get that's how you push yourself beyond your perception of your limits because your body your mind is saying hey you better stop this i'm not liking what's going on here i need you to stop but that's how you can, you can tell your body to go beyond. And you can tell your mind the same thing. You, you know, I, I have worked on projects that literally, literally, we were looking at 2,000 hours of the same task as a team. Uh, you know, and when you're looking at, at doing a task that's going to take 2,000 hours you have to every you have to say okay uh, and this particular task was was carving and sanding a, a very large house full of hand carved doors and and it it is an arduous task to to do this process for 12 hours a day for four or five weeks so you have to say okay I'm going to get up this style of the door, okay? I'm going to get across the header of the door, okay? I'm going to get up the other style of the door. You have to break it down into those simple steps. Otherwise, it will beat you up. It will beat your mind up. And so those are some of the things. You know, when you are doing really hard, sustained tasks, break it down into small, bite-sized pieces so that you're just taking – your mind is only focused on that little bite because if you allow your mind to stay focused on eating the whole elephant, you're going to give up. Yeah. You're, it's, 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 not, it's going to overwhelm you. So, so I love what you said. Break it up into small pieces and you won't experience that overwhelm. You can endure through that very hard, challenging, uh, sometimes very lengthy task by breaking it into small steps. Well said. Well, we hope that this conversation about problem solving and resourcefulness and facing challenges in life has been helpful to you. Um, yeah, I have dozens of techniques. If any of you out there are facing some tough challenges, uh, you know, give me a call. Send me an email. Contribute to the Indiegogo campaign, the crowdfunding campaign, you know, and then give me a call and, and, or send me an email. I'd be happy to support you in some way 
to help you with a methodology or a technique that that might really you know help you help you address that challenge more successfully with a better mindset the better attitude and better results at the other end of it. I'd be honored to have that opportunity to help you. At this stage in life, it really is quite an honor and a blessing to be able to support other people and help them to share the things that we've learned over the years with other people and help them on their journey in the same way that so many people have shared their wisdom and their guidance and helped us on our journey. Yeah. So oh, let's, uh, let's kind of bring this to a close and wrap it up here a little bit. One of the things that we love to do is take that next little step towards finishing up one of our Zoom casts, and that is to give away one of our human-powered hydroponic systems. The way we do that is Shane gives me a number between 1 and 10,000. I plug it into my little spreadsheet, and we come up with a winner. What's the number today, Shane? The number is 353. Would you say that again now? Three eight five three. Let me, I'm trying to. Get wanted, yeah, I want to make sure I got it right. Three eight five three. Got yep, it. Three, and five, our winner for today is is Jeff Gray. Jeff Gray, congratulations! You are the winner of a human-powered hydroponic system. That name doesn't ring any bells with me, so I don't know Jeff. I don't think that I know Jeff. Shane, do you know Jeff, or is he one of those who have? I do know Jeff. He was actually at our launch party. Oh yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now I remember the name, although I don't remember the face attached to it, but I do remember the name. Congratulations, Jeff. Thanks for coming to our launch party. Thanks for being a part of the Ascending Harvest community. We'll send you a little email here later on today and send you a human-powered hydroponic system when we get out of mass manufacturing at right now anticipated at the end of Q1 2019, or you can donate that to a family in need in your name. Congratulations. If you would like to have the opportunity to win your very own human-powered hydroponic system, go to ascendingharvest.com and give us your email, sign up for our list, or better yet, go to the Indiegogo campaign that we have up and running and contribute a buck or two or five. All of the contributors are automatically entered into this prize drawing as well. We'd love to see you do that. Thanks for your conversation today, Shane. I'd love to hear about the ways in which you have overcome you know, the challenges that you've faced in life, breaking it down into simple steps, you know, cowboying up, finding a different way, changing your strategies and tactics, you know, just having that mindset of resourcefulness that I am going to find a way to make this successful no matter what is just awesome. It's great being a part of the team. Yeah, let, thank you. Go ahead. I'll thank let you, you take it us out. Thank you so much. I'd like to remind people that, that our mission at Ascending Harvest is to empower individuals mm. to be able to provide themselves with their own food by creating a system that, that they can grow their own food without any farming experience. And um, that empowerment is going to help people who their whole entire life is difficult because of their economic status, because of where they are in life. Their whole life is difficult. They're facing challenges that, you know, we're talking to you at a level of challenge facing that really pales in comparison to the challenges that these folks face. And let's just, let's just help them out. Imagine, imagine how much that would mean to you to have the ability to grow some of your own food if you literally were hungry every day. If you were literally hungry every day, having that kind of empowering technology would make such a difference in your life. And that's what we're talking about. So please consider contributing to our campaign because you can empower someone and take them to a better place in their life and, and allow them to transcend that, that place of constant hunger that they exist in. So let's do that. Let's, let's do this hard thing and let's do it together because we can just because it's hard doesn't mean it can't be done. Thank you. Well said. Bye-bye, everybody. We will see you tomorrow on our next Zoomcast. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.